Welcome, guys, to How the Frack We Got Here, a show that takes the news and events of the week and try to make sense out of it all. I'm your host, the most will be again, and on this show, we simply are all about the facts. There are plenty, plenty, plenty of limitations out there that simply want to do anything short but inform you. Here at How the Frack We Got Here, that's all we believe in. We go after the left, we go after the right, we're the middle of independence. We go after all sides because there's more than one side of a story to everything. And you need to know it all in order to actually get the in order, in order to actually formulate your own opinion. And that's what we try to do here how the practice got you here. Thanks for listening and uh, hold on. It's gonna be fun. All right, guys. Today's date, December the 1st, 2021, and this is how the frack we got here. I'm your host, the most Will you can on how the frack we got here. We do take the events of the week and try to make sense out of it all. Uh, before I do get started, guys, I do want to sit there and say that we do try to be a family-friendly podcast, um, so we do try to watch your language, but sometimes words do fly. Aside from that, um, some things that may be shown may be too intense for young viewers, so viewer discretion is advised. Aside from that, welcome. I uh, apologize, guys. We are working with new equipment here, and I'm showing a little bit better. So if it feels like that I'm at a certain angle, guys, I apologize. Work with us. We're waiting on new stuff, so to hopefully fill out the angles. But if you can see me and hear me, then we're good. We're going to roll with it. Um, so aside from that, guys, let's go ahead and start with our midweek review pretty much with the word Omnicron. And no, we are not talking about Transformers, and we're not talking about Disney's Loki. We are experiencing a new variant. Omicron now spreading across the globe. And what the CDC director, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, said just today about what's being done in the U.S. right now for surveillance. She said one out of every seven new cases is now being sequenced as they look for this variant here. Now confirmed cases in at least 20 countries. Tonight, three more countries in just the past 24 hours. And this evening, the seemingly different messages from Moderna and Pfizer about the vaccines and how well they might protect people against Omicron. And tonight, why the level of antibodies in your system after both vaccine shots and the booster is so important. Here's ABC Stephanie Ramos. With the new variant spreading around the globe, the CDC director tonight says the country is on high alert and expanding surveillance in search of the first Omicron case in the U.S. We have the tools and surveillance in place to identify the Omicron variant. We also have the tools to prevent Omicron from increasing the strain on our society and our healthcare system. The administration offering free COVID testing for some international travelers at airports in New York, Atlanta, Newark, and San Francisco, and labs around the country sequencing one in seven COVID positive test samples. I'm here at the New York State Department of Health Wadsworth Lab in Albany, New York, where scientists are taking a closer look at positive COVID samples, about 800 of them a week. Researchers here started hunting for Omicron just as soon as the variant with its 50 mutations was identified. Is it possible? that it's in the air and it's that it's already here in the US that is absolutely entirely possible the statistical power of the sequencing programs and the surveillance programs is pretty high so I think we should see it fairly promptly more than 240 cases of Omicron have now been confirmed in 20 countries but tonight there are new questions about where it originated Dutch officials now confirming two cases of Omicron were in the Netherlands before it was detected in passengers arriving Friday from South Africa. COVID cases in South Africa spiking 53% in just the last day. 10% of hospital admissions in the Omicron epicenter there are reportedly unvaccinated children under two years old, a similar trend seen during the Delta wave. But after some doctors reported Omicron symptoms in South Africa were mild, Dr. Anthony Fauci cautioning that it's too soon to draw conclusions. The physicians, mostly private physicians, who've been seeing patients are seeing that they appear to be a less of a severity of illness. Most of those are among younger individuals. We believe that it is too soon to tell of what the level of severity is. The White House today reassuring Americans that if necessary, it would take about three months for vaccine makers to update the vaccine for Omicron and get shots into arms. The estimate of a few months is all inclusive. Just hours after Moderna's CEO warned the vaccines will be less effective at tackling Omicron, saying all the scientists I've talked to say this is not going to be good. The founder of Pfizer's partner, BioNTech, said 
even if the variant brings more breakthrough infections, the vaccine should protect the vaccinated from severe illness. Tonight, health authorities reminding Americans that a booster shot is the best protection, saying antibodies, a key part of overall immunity, are even higher after the third shot than the second. We know from every variant that we have dealt with that the more neutralizing antibodies you have on board, the more effective uh, those vaccines are uh, against variants. And we expect, even if it's not perfect, that certainly that the more neutralizing antibodies, the fact that you're boosted, the greater protection um, you can have. Dr. Anthony Fauci echoing that point just today. Particularly when you boost it, you get a level so high that even if the mutations of various variants diminish that level of protection, you are still within the range of some degree of protection. Yeah, they continue to say there will be some degree of protection here. Stephanie, also news tonight, the FDA panel has today voted in favor of authorizing Merck's antiviral pill for COVID. This would be the first antiviral pill approved. Right, David, the pill was found to be 30% effective, not as high as expected, and advisors questioned whether it would be safe for children and pregnant women. The final decision now goes to the FDA, but this would be the first antiviral COVID pill you can take at home with a prescription, David. All right, Steph. Okay, so needless to say, guys, the best way I can actually put this for a lot of people right now is, first and foremost, don't panic. Um, because we know we like, for all those who are familiar with virology, the one thing we notice is that viruses are much like us. They will grow, they will adapt. Uh, new variants will follow. We are used to this. Now, from what I got out of all this is, yes, um, the first case of Omicron variant has hit the U.S. as of today. However, the thing is still the same. If you are vaccinated, and if you have been vaccinated, then great. Hopefully you are being scheduled to qualify, oh, sorry. Hopefully you are being scheduled to get your booster. Um, we're from any of the big three. Um, but the main thing that I gather from all this is, is that we simply need to be vaccinated. Because again, this is how we beat polio. This is how we beat smallpox. This is how we beat a lot of the pandemics that have taken a lot of human lives. Simply put, because all we did was vaccinate ourselves. The more vaccinated we are, the better chances we're going to get past this. So you already know where I'm going with this. Uh, because the fact of the matter is, there is still a great number of people out there that refuse not to get vaccinated. And I mean, I could sit here and tell you all the reasons why you should. I've kind of been doing that for literally almost six months now. I, it's it's my hope. It's my hope that people do lighten up and actually smarten and wise up and do get the we do get the vaccines because again, natural immunity is not going to be enough anymore. As you see, there are more. We now have three variants of the COVID vaccine out there, and the best way to combat this, guys, is to simply get vaccinated or take the pill. Which again, it's still funny that a lot of people would rather take a pill than get a shot, but again. I just hope you get vaccinated. That's the one thing I want to keep saying. Another thing I did want to cover, guys, is that you ever wonder yourselves, for those that were that grew up under literature such as Fahrenheit 451, uh, to kill a mockingbird, of war and peace, of mice and men, the catcher in the rye, the hobbit, um, Mississippi, burn, uh, Mississippi burning, which I think that was more of a book than a movie, but I could be wrong on that. But for all those that grew up with that type of literature that was questionable, that was challenging and things of that nature, well, it might be a thing of the past now because basically, um, according to the American Library Association, there were 155 efforts to censor books in US schools and libraries. Um, they, said, uh, they, saw, they said that the ALA, the American Library Association, uh, did see a multitude of of people out there, of uh, mostly libraries, who were out here wanting to change the narrative, which in this case was the entire idea of, we don't want these books out there that would, how can I put this, how can I put this in so many words? Um, we don't want to have people remind us of, the, of our history. 
which they sat there and said in, uh, in, their, in the article, since June 1st, the ALA's Office for Electoral Freedom has tracked 155 incidents across the country uh, in about 120 cases, um, basically because the, the minority of those believe that those types of books don't belong on people's shelves. Now, of course, you guys remember I followed this in Texas and in Florida, where they wanted certain books, books that talked about um, CRT or critical race theory, or even mm -hmm. books such as, uh, or even books such as the uh, how can I put this ever so nicely, even books like To Kill a Mockingbird, where it was like the book was literally about racism. Yes, that's the entire point of the book. Or Fahrenheit 451, where they burn books because of the knowledge. They burned books. And who knew Fahrenheit 451 would become an actual thing? And it's not just Texas and Florida. <coughs> Excuse me. There's also places here in Tennessee where they do the exact same thing. They don't want to be reminded, you know, for folks who cry about heritage. You know the big thing a long time ago was heritage? Um, especially with the Confederate battle flag. Remember that? You're going to take down my heritage. Oh, so you're with the sharecroppers, traitors, treasonous people, and slave owners. Well, no. Well, that, what do you think the battle flag was for? But again, these are the same people that turn around and say, I don't want my white children to be hateful of their own race. Well, I'm sorry, but what do you think critical race theory is? It's an accurate, it's an accurate storytelling of the ancestors of your people, which, by the way, is the good and the bad. Especially when the fact of the matter of they the of the of the tremendous atrocities they have caused. But again, I digress. But another atrocity that's going to happen, guys, and I keep saying this as we are now moving forward into um, into twenty twenty two, as we are in the last month of twenty twenty one. The Supreme Court is gearing up to hear a case that will challenge Roe versus Wade. For all those that don't remember, Roe versus Wade is the actual landmark case that makes abortion legal in the United States, despite what a lot of pro-life and seriously repressed religious people would think. That being said, the Supreme Court is now hearing a case on it, and you would think at most times, when it comes to Roe versus Wade, we would not be worried about an overturn of that law. However, because we're now dealing with a conservative league Supreme Court, it's hard to say that that's not, that, you know, the idea of that abortion case being held up may not be as sure as we think it is. Supreme Court will take up its most important abortion rights case in 30 years. The state of Mississippi is asking the justices to overturn Roe versus Wade and end constitutional protections for women who want to end a pregnancy. It comes as the court has still not ruled on Texas's six-week abortion ban, which has now been in effect for nearly three months. ABC's Devin Dwyer takes a closer look at what the court will consider. At the Supreme Court this week, Roe versus Wade is on the line. This is the most important Supreme Court case on abortion since Roe in 1973, and I don't think it's particularly close. The state of Mississippi is asking the court's six to three conservative majority to overturn Roe as wrongly decided and uphold a state ban on most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. This case is about the rule of law. It's about the ability of the people through their elected leaders to decide hard things for themselves. The Supreme Court has never allowed state abortion bans before a fetus is viable outside the womb, or before roughly 24 weeks. It's a precedent the court has affirmed repeatedly. Going back almost 50 years, the court has said pre-viability, a state can't deny ultimately the decision to end a pregnancy. But now the justices faced a stark and significant choice. Strike down the Mississippi laws against precedent or uphold it and overturn Roe. It seems to me a vanishingly slim chance that the court will strike down the Mississippi law. The court might say, we are not finding that there is no constitutional protection for abortion, only that these earlier decisions didn't give sufficient weight to other kinds of state interests. A majority of Americans want Roe versus Wade to stand. Three and four say the choice to have an abortion should be left to a woman and her doctor. This is your grandbaby. How can you do this to your grandchild? Love your wife. Love At Mississippi's only remaining abortion Love clinic, Jackson Women's Health, we saw women from across the South see seeking out care. Right here. One patient telling us no woman wants an abortion, but that having the choice is critical. I do have other children, um, but I've also lost a child. And so um, having a child pass away of health 
issues, you don't want to bring it. You're scared. And it's just not something that my husband and I are ready for. We're just not ready yet. Mississippi and 25 other states are expected to ban or severely restrict abortion if the Supreme Court overturns Roe. I think this is the time. That's six conservatives now. Yes. We're, we're praying that they'll be bold enough and strong enough to take a stance in the right, for the right side. Meanwhile, despite an expedited hearing, still no decision from the court on Texas's ban on most abortions starting in about six weeks, SB 8. We're waiting on tender hooks to hear from the court. As women in the nation's second most populous state have been without access to full abortion care for three months. This delay, I think, makes it less and less likely that the court is going to speak in kind of a clear and emphatic way to strike down what Texas has done. A sharply divided court on the precipice of transforming abortion rights in America, with decisions in the cases expected by next spring. For ABC News, I'm Devin Dwyer. Now let's think about that for a second. I have sat there and said, guys, multiple times. I have sat there and said multiple times, a woman's body is her choice. Choices and consequences are ultimately with her. I will not lose any sleep at night, nor will it affect my life, depending on deciding on what a woman wants to do with her body. It's her body, her choice. Because again, if a man can do whatever he wants with his body, so can a woman. That is just art. That is just arguably very viable fact. Again, and I only point this out to the pro-life people because if pro-life really were pro-life, then at the same time you guys would be at every orphanage and adoption center, taking up every kid who was born. But because the parents, you know, for multiple reasons, could not afford to take care of the child, left them there. You guys should all be there, making sure they have homes not being at abortion clinics, harassing people, for, in my mind, making a responsible choice. I mean, I don't see Republicans complaining when they get their mistresses pregnant. That's all I'm saying. Um, but again, it is amazing to me, the outcry, and I usually would not be worried about this. I would usually not, except that now we have a fully leaning, we have a conservative leaning Supreme Court, and we've already seen with the Texas law that they basically sat there and said, oh, we'll let it run. Roe versus Wade is still a law of the land, but the Texas, but the Texas abortion law is in effect. Oh, we're good with that. So you got to think if they let Texas slide with their law, what's not to say that they won't look at Roe versus Wade and go, well, we can divvy that up. And you already know that a lot of these states, heavily conservative, are already at the willing to put in immediate bans on abortion for women. And I've been saying this, this is an attack on women. I'm with women on this. It's amazing that your bodies, you know, in 2021, your bodies still are not your own. And that's, and it's terrible, it's sad, it's demeaning. And at the same time, I'm just like, if I was on the Democratic side, i will be looking at every Republican, like how dare you say you're for women? Because you're not. If you were for women, you'd be pro-choice. That would just be me. If I was Democrats, I'd be screaming it. But again, there is one person out there who decided that, above all else, that he should join the pro-life community, uh, which is probably a Republican uh, presidential nominee hopeful in 2024, and always the creepiest guy I've ever seen that pretty much is a serial killer. Mike Pence had some stuff to say about it. As Americans, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. And they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And that first among these is life. I have long believed that a society can be judged by how it deals with its most vulnerable. The aged, the infirm, the disabled, and the unborn. And I did not come here today to speak about popular opinion or jurisprudence. I came here today to speak about right and wrong, to say life is a human right and urge the Supreme Court of the United States to choose life. Today we gather on the verge of what may be a new era in American history, an era in which all human life is once again cherished and respected. 
an era in which the great moral questions of our time are once again decided by the people through their chosen representatives instead of unelected judges. As we stand here today, we may well be on the verge of an era when the Supreme Court sends Roe versus Wade to the ash heap of history where it belongs. <laughs> Tomorrow, our Supreme Court will hear oral arguments in Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. The case will decide the constitutionality of a Mississippi law that bans most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The pro-family advocacy group I founded, Advancing American Freedom, along with SBA List and hundreds of pro-life advocates, including many gathered here today, filed amicus briefs in support of the 15-week limit on elective abortions, and we were honored to do so. We are asking the court in no uncertain terms to make history. We are asking the Supreme Court of the United States to overturn Roe v. Wade and restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law. As America... Yes, that's serial killer Mike Pence, ladies and gentlemen. Who's going to sit there and say that he is for, he is throwing his hat in with the pro-life people. Not surprising, it's his base. You know, it's I and mean, and no matter how you look at it, it just gets certifiably worse. And I was and, and don't get me wrong, I was one of the ones that sat there and said, you know what? Maybe if the if this wasn't if this was a down the line, if this was a down the line um uh, uh Supreme Court, I'd be okay. It, I would actually feel better. But because it's not, I'm concerned. And the reason why I'm concerned is because that this will come back. And I, as I said, there is a chance that they could come back and overturn this. They have enough, if enough, if all the conservative Supreme Court judges came together, yes, they could come back, sit there and say that, yes, we are going to overturn this. And again, I cannot fathom the consequences of that because again, these, these, this is a woman, these, these, these are just woman's rights that they just refuse to acknowledge. Well, what about the baby? It's the woman's responsibility. It's she chooses, and I said, and this is the thing about, and this is what I say about the pro-life people, which kills me, because they also believe that you should be able to do whatever you want. And these are women. Women are out here saying, you're killing the baby. You're the baby doesn't have a choice. A fetal heartbeat, life conception starts. I said, no, no, no. I hate to break this to you guys. Life starts when you're born. When you're born, you have a birth date. When you die, you have a death date. Life starts when you're born, not at conception. At the same time, when people look at a fetal heartbeat, it's like at six weeks, most women don't know they're pregnant at six weeks. So again, it's like you're putting up all the goalposts to where either A, and let's just say, let's say that the Supreme Court turns around and does strike down Roe versus Wade. A number of conservative heavy states will immediately put in bans, which means that every woman will, will have to wind up going to a state that does allow abortions, which means that there's going to be a lot of women making some very dangerous decisions, and it could lead to injury or even death. Because again, abortion is, uh, the, the, the whole thing about Roe versus Wade is, it's supposed to be for safe abortions. You don't like abortions? Don't get one. That's simple. It's, it's like, you know what it is? It's like, it's like same-sex marriage. You don't like it? Don't do it. It's like bungee jumping. I, I, don't, I, to this day, will never understand bungee jumping. I will never understand going to a ledge of a high building or someplace high up and trusting an elongated noodle to hopefully bring you back instead of sending you screaming to the ground at well over 100 miles an hour. Some people love it. Some people do it for the thrill. Some people, some people do it uh, for the honest to goodness um, thrill. I don't. It's already thrill. It's already exciting enough being a black person in America, but I don't do it. Do I go out of my way to, do I go out of my way? Uh, do I go out of my way to literally and figuratively disparage people from bungee jumping? No. 
have at it. It's your choice. The choices and consequences of bungee jumping are up to you. Whatever you decide, whatever you decide to do with it, it's not going to affect me in life. The same thing I apply to bungee jumping. The same thing I apply to abortions. If people want to get them, they should have the right to do so. That is their choice, their bodies. Simple and put. Hey, Bond, what's going on, man? Crispy new cam. Yep, new equipment, sir. It is definitely new equipment. Hi, Dip, for all for you watching. I really appreciate that. But yeah, Vaughn, new it's new equipment, so I know I'm coming in a little bit a little bit more high definition. Hopefully, I look okay. Let me know. Um, but move right along, guys. I did also want to cover the unfortunate shooting that also did happen, which again brings up the whole idea of what are we gonna do about gun laws in America. in that deadly shooting at a high school in Michigan. Three students killed, another eight people wounded. A 15-year-old suspect is in custody. Trevor Alt is live now in Oxford, Michigan with the very latest. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, Michael. Authorities say this 15 year old had a weapon his father had just purchased on Friday and he used it to gun down 10 of his classmates and a teacher. And this morning, the community is understandably reeling and now remembering those three students who were killed and who have now been identified. Overnight, the FBI and local sheriffs carrying arms full of evidence out of a 15 year old Michigan student's home after investigators say his school shooting rampage left three dead and eight others wounded and the community mourning the tragedy. They deserve to be known, but they didn't deserve to die tonight. Hours later, the sheriff identifying the three classmates killed. Hannah St. Juliana, just 14 years old, 17-year-old Madison Baldwin, whose family says she'd already been accepted to several colleges, and 16-year-old Tate Meyer, the Oxford High School football team, paying tribute to him, tweeting, Tate was a great young man with a bright future and beloved by all. You will be missed, Tate. Investigators say the suspect had been in class earlier that day, coming out of a bathroom armed with a semi-automatic handgun that his father purchased just four days earlier, opening fire inside the high school near Detroit. Barricaded students posting videos to social media from inside their classrooms as the shooter roamed the school. Aiden Page says his teacher stacked chairs and furniture to block the door, but even that wasn't enough to stop the bullets. There was a bullet hole in our door. My first thought is, I, I might die. I need to text my parents. I need to tell them I love them. Other students caught in the panic, many of them running for their lives. About 100 911 calls flooding in from faculty and students amid the chaos. The classroom next to us, the window on the door got shot at, and that door is probably 10 feet away from the door to our classroom. Others desperately trying to call or text home. I was like, there's a shooter at my school. I just want you guys to know that I love you. And you guys mean so much to me. Thank you for everything you do. The school alerted parents last month to what it had called rumors on campus, saying student interpretations of social media posts and false information have exacerbated the overall concern. But some students maintained they had heard the rumors. So you have been hearing that there was going to be a possible shooting at the high school? Yes, I did. I heard it multiple times. But overnight, the sheriff says he doesn't know if those threats are connected to Tuesday's shooting and that they were never reported to his office. There was nothing that came to us about prior concerns or threats. And that's part of the investigation that we have hundreds of people working. And Michigan's Governor Gretchen Whitmer visibly emotional about the growing gun violence she calls a public health crisis. I think this is every parent's worst nightmare. I hope that we can all rise to the occasion and wrap our arms around the families, the affected children and school personnel in this community. And so again, uh, as, as tragic and sad that it is, and for all those that are wondering, yes, they brought him in alive. And again, it's like, where do we go to now? It's like school shootings are becoming way, way, way too common. And at some point, we have to look at, well, number one, how you got access to the gun. And he, it's kind of funny. It's like he was saying that his father just purchased it, and somehow this uh, individual was able to get a hold of it. So I cannot stress this enough as a gun, as a firearms owner myself. 
that locking up your weapons and making sure that your children cannot access them or anybody for that matter cannot access them is paramount. Even more so that, again, this is the reason why gun laws, gun laws, and I keep saying this and I'll never stop saying this, because every time a school shooting happens, yes, gun laws are brought up because eventually we need to have that conversation. We need to have that conversation that yes, that what are we doing about the gun violence and does that mean we need to curtail the way we do gun laws? That means there need to be penalties? Because again, yes, the father of whoever the suspect is who had his weapon is responsible, is liable, um, and should be penalized for it. Because again, it makes no sense how easily accessible he was able to get that. There is no excuse whatsoever. So again, it's like three children lost their lives. Three parents are going to be mourning. Three parents are going to be mourning the loss of a family member, a uh, loss of their children, and three families are going to be mourning, mourning the loss of family members because again, uh, one person decided that today was the day he needed. They need to end lives. I don't know if it's he or she. They haven't announced the uh, suspect's identity yet. Um, however, the parents have already gotten the gotten them a lawyer. And they have yet to speak to the police, you know, they're in police custody. So take that as you will. So, um, but we will follow that story as it's moving along. Another case that we're actually following, guys, is that now jury selection will be in the trial of ex-officer who killed Dante Wright. Um, keep in mind, this kind of feels like forever and a day ago when that happened that um, the ex-officer who killed Dante Wright was at a track, was at a traffic stop. And according to her, she, according to the officer, she uh, actually dislodged her gun and killed Mr. Wright. Jury selection actually started today, and this is what they had to say about it. Potter's trial as it begins, uh, host and legal analyst of the Law and Crime Network, Terry Austin, is also following it. Terry, what do you think the likelihood is of a conviction for Potter, and what different charges does she face here? I think the likelihood is great that she will definitely be convicted of either manslaughter one or manslaughter two. Those are the two charges that she's currently facing right now. Manslaughter one is a reckless standard, meaning that she basically had no regard for life. And manslaughter two is the lesser of those charges, meaning that it was an accident, it was culpable negligence, but she should be held accountable. And basically, Kira, the difference is really 15 years and 10 years. But I do think the jury is going to come back with one or the other of those charges. So jury selection actually begins today. So what do you think that process is going to look like, given the high profile nature of this case? Well, Judge Chu has allowed cameras into the court, which is interesting because initially she had said no cameras, but because of COVID, she's now decided the cameras can be in that courtroom. And her style is very interesting. She has this soft, captivating voice, and she sort of soothes the jury and makes them feel very comfortable, thank them sincerely for being there, saying that they are really serving their country. So far, the selection has gone well. She did the preliminary instructions, and then she individually questioned juror number two, and he was accepted by both sides. So they're continuing that process, and based on her time schedule, I think she will be able to finish the trial by Christmas Eve is what she told the jury. So do you think Potter will, will take the stand, and could that help or hurt her in this case? You know, that's always the million dollar question, whether or not the defendant should take the stand. I think it all depends on how that evidence goes in. I think the defense is going to hold that card close to the vest. It could help her because she could describe what is going on in her mind, what she was thinking at the time. I think the jury is going to want to know how she, you know, whether or not she panicked. Did she bring her training into question? And how could she have pulled the trigger on a gun versus a taser? So it could help if she could explain that thought process, but it could also hurt if, in fact, that cross-examination goes poorly. 
Right, and I think that's what you know, folks are really interested in. How how could she mistake a taser for a gun? You know, there's a weight difference, color difference, a feel. Uh, it, and you even see in the partner that she's with, um, you see the bright yellow taser uh, on her partner. So it, it's very curious uh, for sure. And you know, the incident occur, uh, occurred just about 10 miles from where Derek Chauvin uh, was standing trial. The Okay, we're just going to cut it off right there just because it's going into something else. So, yes, Kim Potter, remember her? the Who mistaked her taser for a gun, who killed Dante Wright, who will now, guess what, as jury selections are happening, as you can see, that, of course, the, the legal consultant that was brought was like, oh, yes, there's a very good chance she's going to be convicted. Um, I'm not trying to be the rain on the parade guy, but, again... We're still fresh off of Maude Arbery. We're still fresh off that. Yes, we got convictions in all three men. Yes, it took, it, they, they tried their hardest. Uh, the former prosecutor in that county decided not to press charges. They should be brought up on charges. The law enforcement there should also be brought up on charges. Um, so it's still a mess. Granted, we, we got something out of it, but it's still a mess now that needs to be cleaned up. That being said, however, now we're looking at Kim Potter, which again, should be a clear-cut case. However, I said the same thing about Kyle Rittenhouse. It was a clear-cut case. So it could still come back, and they could say it was still negligent. I mean, the charges against her is, you know, there's 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 uh, manslaughter, and there's manslaughter with malice, which means that it was, did, it was done intensely. Um, so she could be looking anywhere from 10 to 20 years in prison. Um, I still think that's a slap on the wrist, considering the fact that the matter is, you work in law enforcement. You train this way. You know what you have on you. How in the world could you mistake a gun for a taser? There's a weight difference. There's a color difference. Every taser of all, every taser I've ever seen, uh, for the most part, is yellow and black for a reason. Because you want to tell the difference from a handgun. A handgun for most for most grips is black. Uh, for most grips and handles is black. A taser is usually yellow or black. But again, there's a weight difference. There's a feel. You obviously know on your belt where the taser is and where the gun is. As a law enforcement officer, you train for this. So it'll be interesting to see where they uh, actually go with this. Um, as far as that goes, just because the fact of the matter is, guys, um, like I said, I don't know if she's going to get a full conviction. I really don't. Please let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. But I, like I said, I'll be watching the Dante Wright uh, trial to see what happens with Kim, with the ex-officer Kim Potter. Again, you can't help but have that little bit of doubt that the jury may actually have sympathy for her. And, and you know, there is that chance that, yes, she could walk and there is a chance she could be found guilty. We'll see. So a lot of y'all guys who are probably in the middle of what are you going to get for Christmas are probably still wondering how shipping and things of that nature are going. Well, again, guys, uh, just to give you guys a quick synopsis of this, the FTC is launching a probe into supply chain realtors, Amazon, Walmart, and other retailers because they're trying to figure out what's the holdup. It's not just because the dock workers since uh, President Biden has made several ports 24 seven, but there's still a lot of prop, there's still a lot of storage areas still filled up. There's still a lot of shipping containers off port waiting to come in. At the same time, if you've been to a re if you've been to a nearby store, some things are still not still being restocked. So what they've decided to do with the FTC is start to look into what's going on with it. Um, which they can do through the uh, through their own act, which allows them to study uh, without law enforcement what's actually going on with these retailers. Uh, so Amazon, Walmart, and many other ones are going to have to basically um, are basically going to supply that information. And of course, there is penalties, uh, penalties and fines if we find out that the retailers themselves are the problem. So again, it's going to be interesting uh, regarding that. Because I've said before, um, since these ports are open 24-7, I'm going to be quite honest. I think, it, I think it's not the fact that we don't have enough dock workers, things of that nature. I think the retailers themselves are enjoying the price gouging that they're doing, especially in the food department, just because prices have increased and their profits have increased when they're supposedly having stocking issues. Supply and demand. Except that we as people are getting the short end of the stick. So we'll see how that goes from there. So uh, next last story that we got, guys, is again, 
This is the reason why I say I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, I'm all the way progressive, even though right now the Democrats have a lot of progressive ideas, but they're being curtailed by the Senate Democrats who are pretty much moderate. But that being said, this is the Republican Party as we know it. Because not only do we have uh, Representative Gosnar who decided to do a editorial uh, cartoon of him cutting off the head of AOC and Biden, not only because we have uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene who has no problem talking about Jews and Hitler, we have a new person that has now entered the field who decided that she's going to talk about Muslims, forgetting the fact that she has to work with a representative who's also Muslim on the other side. I wish... I can make this up. Outspoken newcomer to Congress. America does not need and cannot afford this junk. The 34 year old Colorado Republican, married mom, gun rights enthusiast. Bravo. Lauren Boebert, well ally of former President Trump, did something Trump detests. Boebert apologized. Under pressure, she tweeted this Friday. I apologize to anyone in the Muslim community I offended with my comment about Representative Omar. Minnesota Democrat Ilhan Omar is one of only three Muslims serving in Congress. In this video taken at an event, Bobert joked and seemed to suggest that Omar could be wearing explosives when with her in an elevator. I look to my left, and there she is, Ilhan Omar. And I said, well... She doesn't have a backpack, we should be fine. Oh. <laughs> Congresswoman Omar responded, saying I am a suicide bomber is no laughing matter. She writes, normalizing this bigotry not only endangers my life, but the lives of all Muslims. Speaker Pelosi and Democratic leadership called Boebert's comments deeply offensive and concerning and slammed Republican leader Kevin McCarthy for his repeated failure to condemn inflammatory and bigoted rhetoric. McCarthy responded that Boebert apologized for what she said and has reached out to Congresswoman Omar to meet next week. Okay, let's think about this for a second. Let's really, really think about this for a second. A representative sat there and said something so vile, so bad, about a fellow congressperson and Kevin McCarthy's, which again, I'm not surprised by this, about McCarthy, that again, he's one of those guys that turns around and says, well, she's apologized for the comment. Uh, apologize to who? Because she didn't apologize to, she didn't apologize to Representative Omar. She, what did she apologize? That's, that's like, you know what that is? That's like, that's like a white person calling a black person the N-word, but goes back to their parents to apologize for calling the black person the N-word, but you didn't go back to the black person and apologize for using the N-word. If you still had teeth, because I know for most of us, we hear the N-word, you, you losing a few molars. But the point I'm making is this, is that this is the Republican side, that their actions and consequence, they'll, they can cite freedom of speech, they can cite all this all they want to, but when it comes down to it, they this is they always say, well, my freedoms are being, my freedoms are being this, my freedoms are being that. No, here's what I say. You can say whatever you want to. That's freedom of speech. It does not absolve you from the consequences of what you say. Like again, for her to sit there, and again, this is just, this is my thing, because Kevin McCarthy, however, will not, will not get rid of anybody. He has the ability to get rid of Brobart. He does. He has the ability to get rid of Gosner. He won't. He has the ability to get rid of Major Marjorie Taylor Greene. He won't. There are currently right now three Republicans that have done very heinous acts that have done Democratic side that they, they would have resigned. But for the simple fact of the matter is, they are three people who are literally and figuratively allowed to say what they want without due consequence. Where have we seen that? A certain disgraced former president. Because he said a lot of things that, again, he got away with with zero consequence, at least until not, not until he winds up in his, one of his many lawsuits. But these Republicans, this is, the, this is the new crop. The new crop of Republicans is, we will say anything we want and nobody will hold us accountable. Which again, is a, it's a dangerous precedent. 
Because keep in mind, guys, I've been saying this, 2022 is the year of the midterms, and Republicans are gunning to break up this Democratic majority. And trust me, they will use any means necessary to do so, and Kevin McCarthy needs all the people on his side because Trump still believes that he's still going to be a presidential nominee in 2024. He still believes that. And the fact that there are many people backing that up is a scary-ass thought. That's all I'm saying. So, that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on to our feel-good segment because usually on how the frack we got here, we usually cover a lot of things, doom and gloom, make lose your rate, make lose your faith in humanity. But, hey, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. Um... We're trying to brighten up your weekend, you know, put a smile on your face, and a little, little, you know, song in your step. And I like stories like this just because, again, it, it, I'm not going to say it's more like random acts of kindness, which is always fun, but sometimes those random acts of kindness come with a little bit extra. Like what this man got. Um, this this man, this gentleman here, um, and forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Mr. Licious, Alicious, Lis McGlees. I'm going to pronounce your name right. Anyway, let's go with Alexander. Alexander was a man who was recovering from open heart surgery, um, but was given a scratch off ticket uh, within a get well card. And when he got his get well card, uh, which came with a lottery ticket, as he scratched the numbers off, he realized that he won the second tier prize for the game, $1 million. And of course, that is actually a lottery ticket. That's actually a scratch off ticket that he got right there in which he got the highest prize. And again, this is the first time this man has won something. Someone else gave him a lottery ticket for his birthday some years ago, and he won $1,000 off that. So again, he did claim his $1 million prize on Friday and chose the cash, uh, chose the cash option. So he, before taxes, got his uh, payment of $650,000. I don't know about y'all, but number one, this man won three times, if you really think about it. Previous, birth, uh, previous birthday... He got $1,000 on a scratch-off ticket. He successfully survived open-heart surgery because, again, that's a risky surgery. Anybody who's ever dealt with open-heart surgery or is, a, or is about to experience it knows there's always that fear that you could die on the operating table. And the fact that he survived was cool. And then on top of that, not only did you survive open-heart surgery, that you now, right now, are $650,000 richer. If that ain't a good day, I don't know what is. That's all I'm saying. But... That's gonna do it for us. That's gonna do it for what we got, guys. So I do thank everybody that liked, that watched, that shared, that let people know we're live. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, before I do get out of here, some shameless plugging. And yes, I will fix, like I said, new equipment. And I couldn't really get the angle of the camera that I wanted because I actually have some new equipment around the apartment. So this is the reason why you're getting to see a different side. You get to see, you know, the other side, I guess you could say. But as I'm waiting for stands, things of that nature, the angle will change. I'll be frank, I'll be front facing again. So you know, just for the next couple of weeks, just roll with it because trust me, trying to orient anything now between Christmas is crazy. But anyway, shameless plugging uh, before I do get out of here. I do want to talk about my buddy Big BZA Dot, um, which you can find him on his Facebook page, Dave Devon was put on Facebook, Big BZA Dot on socials, where he uh, has changed some things up. Um, I know for right now, you can still catch his Smokey Trailer Sunday repeats, uh, which you can find on his page at Adelbon Westwood on Facebook, but usually they're every Sunday from 6.30 to 9 p.m. And of course, he does have the RAF, which is like America's Funny Home Videos he's done by World Star, which you can definitely go back and see the replays of those on his page. But usually he's in, he's usually live every Tuesday from 6.30 to 9 p.m. He also has a video game channel called Making Plays, which you can also see on his Facebook page. And he also does post some funny stuff. Weird stuff sometimes, but you know, he's family. I still love him. Uh, but you definitely can check him out, Adelbon Westwood on Facebook or BigBZA Dot on all socials. Also, shout out to Ari and Gee present Geek Salad. Uh, a couple of guys I have met this year of uh, of the podcasting nation that allowed me to share their allowed me to share my podcast on their page. I certainly appreciate that. What is Geek Salad? Well, it's two guys along with others that have opinion of everything in the pop in the uh, pop icon and culture world and things outside of it. It is definitely it is definitely no holds bars. It is definitely. Uh, off filter, but it's always entertaining. I should know because me and Ari the King always seem to have a disagreement about 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 Snyder. But anyway, grab a wonderful group of guys. Definitely do check them out. Ari and Geek present Geek Salad. Check them out on Facebook as well as YouTube as the YouTube page is showing there. Now, as for yours, truly, guys, link at the bottom. You copy and paste that into your browser. We'll take you to my link tree that shows the Facebook and YouTube groups for all of my podcasts, How the Frack We Got Here, Get Bit, and, of course, the Alphamous Podcast. My IG handle, which is, I told you, we're Cam Wrangle. Blackbox447, which is in my top left-hand corner. Definitely follow me there. 
as I usually post movie reviews, game reviews, um, gym stuff, and some inspirational stuff, you know, I do a couple push-ups. But aside from that, and yes, I did post my reviews of Resident Evil and House of Gucci. Um, House of Gucci, honestly, was a very good movie. If you have not seen it, it was definitely awesome. Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. Yeah, you might as well wait for that one. But anyway, definitely check me out there. And of course, guys, like I said before, uh, again, random acts of kindness. I cannot stress this out enough. If you have the ability to make somebody's life great, whether it's a minute, hour, a day, or a lifetime, go ahead and do so the world could use more random acts of kindness because it takes exactly zero energy to be nice. It takes everything in you to be a dick. Simply put. And also, before we get out of here, guys, please, oh, please get vaccinated. We have now multiple variants out there. Um, it does not cost anything to get vaccinated. It does not cost anything to get a booster. It does not cost anything except saving your life and saving those around you. It is not just about you anymore. I cannot stress that enough. When you make a decision to, in my, to inoculate yourself, you're actually helping us out. Because you know why? I got places I want to go. I want to go. To, I want to take my girlfriend to Greece. I want to be able to see Japan. I want to be able to see Mother Africa. I want to be able to see Australia, Italy. I want to be able to see all these places. But until all of us can come together and actually beat this pandemic, I'm stuck in the U.S. I would like to venture. I would like to travel. But I don't want to do so in a pandemic area just because I don't want to basically be the reason another person gets sick. Simple. Get the shot. It's not that freaking hard. The last thing I'll say about how the fact we got here, guys, is all about staying informed. We're not trying to change minds, persuade people. We are simply doing what the news stations of old try to do. Give you all the information, allow you to make up your own mind for yourself. We do a lot better in society. We're informed. We're progressive. We move forward. We try to change. We try to actually make the decisions that should have been done back then by making them now. Like electing our first Madam Vice President who is black. I'm still hoping for Michelle Obama and her husband in 2024 because Mrs. Mrs. Obama, this is my personal plea. When you were in the White House, everything was all right. Needless to say, when a black person is in the when a black woman is in the White House. Things run faster. That's all I'm saying. That being said, guys, thank you all for watching. If you watch this on the playback, please comment if it's live. I still don't know what you guys think about everything that we discussed. Aside from that, guys, as I said before many a times, as we're going to keep on moving forward with this train, take care of yourselves and each other, and we will definitely get through this. Peace!